y'all. Today on Undetected Footprints, we will be talking about Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. They were both from Kansas, went missing on March 30th. They were last seen together driving to pick up children in Oklahoma. They never reached their destination and their car was later found abandoned near a highway in Texas County, Oklahoma, which lies between Kansas and Texas. Investigators suspect foul play in their disappearance. The Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation has been involved in the case and they consider the women to be in danger. Since no one has heard from them in days, Veronica Butler has several tattoos including a Chinese symbol on her left forearm and a sunflower on her left shoulder. This investigation is ongoing and authorities continue to search for these women. Where they went missing at is so isolated. They have no idea who would want to follow them and hurt them. They each have children. Both of these women have kids waiting at home who are waiting for their moms to get back. Hopefully they can be found soon and be found safe and sound. Here is a picture of both women and what they last had on when they went missing. Let's check it out. Up next is a video from News Nation about their disappearance. Let's take a look. Her spent the day at that very spot. She joins us live now from Liberal, Kansas. So Brooke, what was new? What'd you find out today? Well, Ashley, I have been on the phone really all afternoon with OSBI trying to get some more information on this case. What I learned today is that investigators say they are still hopeful that these two moms are alive today. And we know that investigators are focusing very heavily on that car that was found abandoned in that rural area in Oklahoma. But of course, a layer of difficulty in all of this is just how rural it is out there. We went out there today, my crew and I, to really get the lay of the land. Here's what we saw. So this is the area where that abandoned car was spotted. Investigators now saying they've got evidence from that car to suggest foul play in the disappearance of these two moms. So we wanted to bring you out here to show you where the car was found. If you look around, man, it is desolate out here. This is pretty much as rural as rural gets. The closest town is probably about 12 miles away, but these two moms also weren't too far from their destination where they were supposed to pick up Veronica Butler's two kids. They probably had about two or three miles left to go when they seemingly vanish. And this is where investigators found their car on this dirt road off the side of the highway. Again, a very, very desolate area. Our cell signal was going in and out as we were driving out here. So if their car broke down, if they needed to call for help, would they have even been able to do that? So as we were looking around here too, we were trying to figure out even in this area where their car could have been. Uh, we were walking around and that's when we spotted just really the only piece of evidence, the only indication that there might have been a crime scene out here. We saw this last little piece of yellow sheriff's office tape. And Ashley, as we've been reporting, OSBI said that they now have some evidence either in or around the car, leading them to believe that there is foul play uh, suspected in the disappearance of these two moms. We've heard some rumors that there was blood around the car. I've pressed OSBI trying to confirm that information. So far, though, investigators not saying what evidence they have in that car. I'm so fascinated by watching you out there in that exact spot because I've just been mm -hmm. trying to envision what happened in that moment. The crime tape is fascinating that they left that behind. It was tied to what looked like a post that might have been up at some point. But there was also that depressed area yeah. of grass. Do we know if the car was off the road and in that depressed area mm -hmm. of grass? Do we know if the car was on the road? Like any detail like that? I've gotten a couple of conflicting reports, Ashley. I talked to one guy out there this morning who said he saw the blue car abandoned there on Saturday. He said he didn't see anyone around. By the time he saw the car, it was empty, but he was a little ways away. He told me that the car was sort of in the brush off the side of the road, 
but that I spoke with somebody else very, very close to the case who said that they saw the car and it was, in fact, on the dirt road. Uh, but either way, regardless of those conflicting reports, that car was abandoned off the side of the highway. And that, I think, is a very big question for so many people because these two women were only about 10 minutes away from what would have been their destination. They were almost there. And so why they would have pulled off to the side of the road is, of course, a question. And then you add in that layer of just how desolate it is out there. Our cell signal was going in and out. If they needed to call for help, would they have even been able to do that? Mm. I mean, no one would hear you scream out there. No one would hear a gunshot, you know, it would seem. It's just so, I don't know, it just gives me the willies. Here is a picture of the father of Veronica Butler's children. In 2022, child restraint violation, no contest. In 2023, possession of a firearm, no contest. 2024, domestic assault and battery in presence of a minor, dismissed. He has a little bit of a record there. Not sure if he had anything to do with this or not, but hopefully we find out the answer soon on what's going on with this case and if they're close to finding them and if they even have a suspect yet. Only time will tell. Hopefully sooner than later. Let's take a look. Here's a video that News Nation did, I believe on Friday. Any updates that could have been within the past week. Let's take a look. When it comes to missing persons whom police consider endangered and potentially victims of foul play, no news is not good news. But here we are, almost one full week since these two, Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly, set out from rural Kansas just to pick up Veronica's kids. They were in Eva, Oklahoma. And um, you know what? It was not far from the state line. They just needed to make it there, but something happened on the way. The women's car turned up on the side of the road in the panhandle, just about three miles short of their destination. The women themselves have not been seen since, but there was something in that car, something that shot red flags a mile high over those grassy plains. So why won't the investigators say what that something was? Today in the women's hometown of Hugoton, Kansas, a public outpouring of concern, people gathering just to, to pray and just to be together as another day passed with a whole lot of silence. I want to get to Brooke Schaefer right now. She's News Nation's national correspondent. She's been there all day, all day yesterday, several days in fact. She was at the vigil. Gosh, it looks behind you like there's northern lights, but um, it's such a serene place where you are. I, I don't expect to see this kind of a story develop, and I'm imagining that the people you're talking to feel a bit the same way. That's exactly what they're saying, Ashley. So many people have told us this just doesn't happen here. And like you said, we're going on almost a week now that these two moms have been missing. Tomorrow marks one week. And today, still really no updates from authorities. We really haven't gotten a major update from them uh, since really since I think it was Wednesday when we found out that they now suspect foul play. Uh, since then, I've been calling OSBI multiple times a day trying to get any information uh, so far. No leads, no suspects, no arrests, no idea where these moms are as we head into the weekend now with little to no information. But I keep hearing tips and leads pouring in, and I get so, yeah. I don't know, buoyed by, by that. Um, and yet, still, they're so tight-lipped about it. And, and I still can't get my head around, how are they trying to spur tips and leads when they're not engaging with the press and asking for them? That definitely is, I think, maybe a confusing reception for us. We were expecting to get there to Hugoton, Kansas, and um, and that rural spot in Oklahoma, and really start to get all of this information. And that hasn't been the case for us. It's been really tight-lipped from investigators, really not telling us a whole lot. And like I said, every day I've been calling, asking for updates, and really getting nothing. Uh, we have heard, like you mentioned, that there are lots of tips pouring in. But keep in mind, again, as we've been reporting, where these women seemingly vanished in broad daylight 
is an incredibly rural, rural area. Pretty much some people called it as rural as rural gets. So we're not seeing like security cameras, videos, anything that might normally be a really key piece of evidence in a case like this. It just doesn't exist. I mean, it just looks like something out of a John Steinbeck uh, novel. You know, I expect to see the, the Jodes uh, heading down those, those roads. It's so rural. Um, the, you know, how huh, look, in the absence of information, you know what happens, Brooke. The rumor mill just starts to churn. And I get the impression that's happening in that small town. Lots of people are saying lots of things about other people. Very much so. What's the story about the, yeah, what's the story about people who are sort of like pointing fingers and starting to name names? Yeah, very small town. Everybody knows everybody. The rumor mill absolutely churning tonight, especially, like I said, as we head into the weekend with no information on where these two moms could be. Today, we were hearing some rumors about possible activity in the case, some suspects there. Uh, I reached out to OSBI again multiple times, and I said, hey, look, I'm hearing this, and I'm hearing it from pretty much everybody. And they said, no updates, no leads, no suspects. I called back again because I kept hearing the same thing. There's movement in the case, there's movement in the case. And I called OSBI, and they said there's no truth to it. Uh, but yeah, like you said, the rumor mill absolutely churning. But I think really it stems from that frustration. Everybody wants answers. They want to know where these two moms are. And we really have little information to go on. You got to really beware of, you know, Twitter and X or whatever he calls it now, um, you know, and social media uh, jumping on this kind of stuff because that's mm. sometimes where the really ugly, you know, fake stuff uh, starts to surface. And this, that's not helpful in a case like this. Brooke, I hate to say it, you're yeah. staying on the case. Um, it's beautiful, though. I mean, it's a beautiful area. I just wish it wasn't such a sad story. Thank you for doing such a great job out there. Yeah. Absolutely. Hoping to get some answers soon. Let's hope and pray Veronica and Jillian can be found safe and be found soon so they can get home to their families.